Hello, greetings and salutations. This is Queen Zen, and you're not watching me on EXP. This is a new series that I'll be calling Red Building, in which I'll be teaching you redstone. Um, yeah, we'll start off um, with the easy bits, as per usual, and we'll slowly work our way up to uh, the more advanced parts. So, today I'll be teaching you about the redstone circuits. Uh, not all of the, not all about it, just the basics, and by that I mean the components. What does a circuit exist uh, from? Well, let's, first let's look at what is a circuit. And I'll just pick off, uh, pick up a random quote, a random quote, jeez. Alright. An electronic circuit is composed of individual electronic components, such as resistors, transistors, capacitors, inductors, and diodes, connected by conductive wires or traces, traces through which elect uh, electric current can flow. The combination of components and wires allows various simple and complex operations to be uh, performed. Signals can be amplified. Computations can be performed and data can be moved from one place to another. From Wikipedia. Now, what this, what does this all mean? It basically means that a circuit is uh, a collection of components that lets power flow from point A to B, and within that circuit, you can decide if it's altered or not, um, and if it's altered, how much you can alter it, in which way. Um, I'm keeping it simple. Uh, I'm only saying power because when you start talking data, with redstone it's possible to uh, transfer data, but then you get to a, a, a level of redstone that's pretty high up. Uh, it's a level of redstone that I even haven't even reached yet. <laughs> well, yet. I don't think I'm ever going to because, frankly, I'm not that interested in. Uh, transmitting data. Well, through redstone at least. So let's look at a few ways to power something. You have trip wires, which you just stand in and the power goes to this block and this block into that block. Uh, redstone... Uh, no, not redstone. <laughs> trip wire does not power anything below it. Oh, and I broke it because if trip wire is floating in midair and a block is placed under it, it breaks. This is it's as easy as that. However, if you uh, already have something and place um, string, it won't actually connect until everything is. So let's try that again. Ta-da! Alright, so the point I was trying to make is string itself will not power, the tripwire hooks however will. Okay, on to the next one. You have buttons. The wooden button and the stone button. The wooden button has input that's a little bit longer than the stone button and you really need to uh, really need to uh, yeah, I'll just say look really closely if you want to know how much longer it takes. Um, on top of that, you can also shoot the wooden ar button with arrows, and then it will uh, input the signal as long as the arrow is stuck inside of the button. Yes, alright, then there's the lever. As long as it's flipped, it will transmit power. Then you have two uh, pressure plates. <laughs> <laughs> Treasure plates. Oh yeah, I'm keeping that one. Okay, so the difference between these two is it's not the duration uh, like the buttons. It's the sensitivity. Both react to players and mobs. However, only the wooden one uh, reacts to dropped items. Yeah? Alright, so as long as there's an item on top of the uh, wooden pressure plate, it will admit a signal. On to something else. You may be wondering why I used red wool. Not because I like it or something. It's to uh, 
give an indication of the power level, in which I use black wool blocks to indicate that something is not powered at all, such as this one. Then there's the yellow block for just regularly powered blocks. And then there's the red one for super powered blocks. These blocks are powered up enough that they can actually power uh, an adjacent block, like this. Regularly powered blocks can't do that. And super powered, this one is super powered, this one is regularly powered, so this one will be out. Yes? Alright. So, on to the redstone torch. This is fairly self-explanatory. And to this I will add that um, no matter which surface it is, if there's a redstone torch on top of it, uh, that redstone torch will not be powering that surface. So, like this. This one is black, and this one is yellow. Uh, regularly powered, I mean. So, yeah. And this one, yeah, super powered. Okay, now we're going to be talking about signal strength. This is the redstone torch again, and it admits a, a signal strength of 15 blocks. There's only one thing in the entirety of Minecraft that does not admit a signal strength of 15 blocks, and we'll get to it a bit later in this episode, still. Okay, so yeah. These as well. Anyway, yeah. Where was I? What was I saying in the. Uh, rather? The torch emits a signal strength of 15 blocks, and that means that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 blocks are powered, and beyond that, nothing will get powered. You see, this one still has particles and a minor glow, and this one is just completely off. Alright, well, that's about it for torches. Oh, another thing I forgot to add. You can, um, let's, let's say, let's use this, because I can't speak out these things. Kill, you can kill a torch. And you do that by just making something like this. Now, what's happening? Um, if you have a torch, yeah, and it's placed on the side of a uh, on the side of a surface, a solid surface, or this this works as well. It and it receives power, so the block receives power, it will get turned off. Right? Alright. Um, same as this one. Give this block power, it will turn off. This loses power, so this one will turn on. Now what just happened uh, with this example was... Um, I placed uh, this here, and then this torch powered itself, then turned off, so it turned on back again and off and in an infinite loop at a speed that's it just makes it sick. So it kind of went like, uh, no man, no, no way, I'm not going to do this, uh, and it's just turning off. Now in this state, it does not give off any power. Just wait till it burns out. So yeah. You can fix it by just replacing it and then you'll be done. So now we get to redstone dust. Something very small but very significant. There's two types of redstone dust. There's the redstone dot, yeah, which um, powers everything around it with superpower. By that I mean let me just power it from above. Oh. <laughs> so, 
sorry. Okay. Yeah, now this dust is powered. Now this block is super powered. This one here? Yes. This one has super power. This one has super power. All of them have. Okay. Now redstone dust. Or any redstone dust. Uh, to be more specific. Can never power whatever is above it. As you can see. The, the dust is on. But this lamp isn't. So it's not receiving any power. Alright. Good. Now there's uh, the the other type of redstone dust <laughs> yeah that's the redstone line now the way this works is um, anything it points at will receive power in addition to whatever it's laid on so like this this block is super powered and can, can turn on this lamp same story for this one However, whatever is to the sides is off. Yeah, this is off and this is off. Yeah. Okay, now that's uh, redstone dot and the redstone line. Now we're moving on because you just saw this redstone line makes this red block super powered, right? So you'd think that. Um, Oh wait, let's use this one instead. So you think that using this might power this dust, however it doesn't. Yes, this block is indeed super powered. See? Alright. So why doesn't this work? Dodge knows. However, you can make it work. By doing something like this. You introduce repeaters into the system. Uh, let me just add a power source to each of those. Okay, so here you have dust. Yeah, feeding into this block. Then you take out the repeater, which I forgot. Alright, like this. And now you do have power. Repeaters have the unique ability to pull power out of a block. However, it's not limited to just that. Dust again. A repeater and dust and it's active so they have the power to both pull and push power in and out of a block it's very useful so here we are again this okay so what do we have here a useful example of how um, transparent and opaque blocks work let's just do this okay so here I put down a power source redstone torch okay now neither of these lamps are powered why is that because they are above the super powered blocks so they're out of reach of those but they should be in front of the redstone line right well the redstone line is currently connected to itself so that's not gonna work how can you fix this, you wonder? Well, you could remove these guys. However, what if these were important somehow? Well, then what you could do is, for example, block it off. Like this. See how this works? Oh, dang it. Um, sorry, I made a, a very complicated butt switch that I can't even explain yet. Um... Yeah, as I said, I can't even explain it yet. However, I'll just go with it like this. Okay. Now, now that this line points towards this lamp, it's super powered. Yeah, alright. However, uh, I did say something about differences between uh, opaque and transparent blocks. And that would be the di uh, this. This is the difference. Solid wool block blocks redstone. Opaque um, transparent um, glass doesn't. And it goes for any transparent blocks. This includes slabs and stairs. Yep. Alright. 
So, uh, there we go. Let's move on to the next part, shall we? Repeaters. I uh, already showed you something uh, at the last part. Okay. So, what is a repeater useful for, except for putting, pushing and pulling uh, redstone through blocks? Because you could easily just replace that with a lower block, right? Well, there is uh, useful for extending a circuit. As you can see, wait, let me just make it a little easier. There we go, it's night. Now it's easier to see. That uh, torch way over there has a signal that reaches until around here. However, let's say we need it for uh, le need it to go quite a bit longer to turn on that lamp. So what can we do? We can put on a repeater right here, uh, here on the 16th block. And there we go. Let there be light. Repeaters extend signals, or rather, uh, not really extending, but, but completely refreshing. So, if it receives any kind of power, it emits a new 15 level... Sure, let's go with level. 15 level strength uh, redstone power. There we go. However, what does this do, you may ask? Well, that's something we call delay in redstone. Um, there's two types of delay, uh, not delay. Delay is expressed in ticks, and there's two types of ticks. There we go. Game ticks, uh, of which each one is one twentieth of a second, and redstone ticks, of which each one is one tenth of a second. Well, so that's the difference between those two, and uh, any redstone tick, or rather any tick discussed when talking redstone, refers to a redstone tick. Alright, so repeaters have a def uh, the lowest amount of um, delay a repeater can give you is a single tick, meaning that um, whenever this signal runs out, one tick later this one gets uh, reactivated. Wait, just let me show you. Okay, so when I turn this line on, one tick later, that lamp turns on. That's because this one made it uh, delayed the line uh, by one tick. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> okay, so this could be annoying, but it could also be useful. For example... Oh, wait. Right. So, uh, let's just wait with the example even though it looks really, really uh, interesting. The way power goes through a repeater is... Come on, place a block, place redstone, place another block, place power. Okay, what happens is the repeater never accepts or outputs uh, power on the sides or on top of it. Yeah, these are all always black, unless powered by something else. As you can see, Nothing. Yep. Okay. Now, it only accepts power from this side, or the big side of an arrow you can see here. Yeah, arrow. And its output is always super powered. Yep. Alright. Now, on to the interesting part. Okay. What is delay useful for, you may ask? Well, Let's say I have this piston, alright? And I'm trying to get this diamond block over here. Because, I don't know, there's a torch there and this needs to be super powered to activate a circuit. Alright, let's, let's just say it does that. Or rather, let's build it like that. Um, yeah. There we go. Okay. Now, the way it's set up right now, you think it might work, right? But these pistons would probably activate at the same time. However, since this piston is a bit closer to the button over here, or this block even, it will activate first. So what do you get? You get this. 
nothing happens. Okay? So now, let's see what happens when we introduce delay. Okay? Just a single tick delay. There we go. The lamp is turned on. And it works. So that's delay. It's really useful. Okay. That's the redstone repeater. And uh, what's so good about it? Now let's go to a, ni a new edition. Uh, it came up in the uh, 1.5 redstone update. It's the comparator! <laughs> okay. So, how does this thing work? Um, it has two sides. Actually, four sides, because it's square. <laughs> okay. This, let's call this side A, or input A. And let's call these sides input B. Either side works. Okay. So what I did with this torch is give it an input of 15 blocks, as you can see. Or if you wish to count these redstone lamps, go ahead. Yep. Okay. Now it has two modes. It has compare mode and it has subtract mode. And I'll show you compare mode right now. Basically, if you want it uh, written, basically compare mode is if, si if input B is bigger than input A, the signal will turn off. So let's make it possible for signal B to be bigger than A. There we go. Now it has an input of 14 blocks. It should have an input of 14 blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. How curious. Alright, let's move it away one more. There we go. Now it's fourteen. Input of fourteen. Yes. Alright, now. Now that it has an input of fourteen. Um, there is the option of making input B bigger than input A. This will give it a power of 1, which will do nothing, because input A is bigger than input B still. If you turn it off, input A remains bigger than input B, because input B is non-existent. Now, if you make input B 15, Huh. Interesting. Oh, that's why. I see. Yeah. I need to uh, move this one away a bit. Nope, not there either. Uh huh. Okay, let's just go with this. There we go. Now that input B is bigger than input A, signal is off. Yes. Alright. Oh, that's uh, compare mode. <laughs> okay. So, now let's get back to... Now let's move on to subtract mode. Which, if you right-click, is noted by this torch turning on. And let's give it a uh, maximum power back. Okay. Yep. 15 lamps. 16th uh, turned off. Because there is no 16th. And now let's see what happens if you put on the weakest power, power of 1. It turns off. One of the lamps turns off. That's because... The input A... Is at max power and input B is at um, none but one power or just one. If you subtract one from max, you get 14 or max minus one. So the formula for compare mode would be if 
input A is bigger than input B, subtract input B from input A. Yes? Alright. Now let's see what happens if you go around midway. It turns off around midway. And that's the comparator. Yeah. Let's move on to something really simple. This is also added to the 1.5 redstone update. The redstone block. Yes, the redstone block. Basically what it is, is it's a, a, a torch, it's a redstone torch, that can be pushed, moved and float. Every side it touches um, emits just regular power. And although I haven't actually found a use yet that can't be filled, it's great for storing redstone, because the recipe requires that you basically make an iron block, but done, but with redstone. So, 9 redstone dust per block. Okay, so next is the, day, the daylight sensor. Basically, depending on how much sunlight there is, its signal output changes. So let's play around with that a bit. Time set. This is the darkest I know. It's completely off. Alright. Let's move on to somewhere between dusk and dawn. So that would be this. One block. The sun is coming up. Okay. Now, how about I stare at this for a little while? And then speed it up and show you uh, that as light progresses, so does this um, little component. Okay, so yeah, that's about it. Next thing they added would be jukeboxes. Yes, jukeboxes now have the ability to transmit power. How, you may ask? Through the use of discs. Music discs, that is. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, well, this is something pretty... Uh, Interesting. If you place a comparator with its backside against the jukebox and you play a song, it transmits power. But how much power? Oh crap, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> okay. So disc number 13 gives off one signal string. Let's replace that with the jukebox and then we'll place it. Okay. So then, cat gives off signal strength of 2, blocks 3, chirp 4, etc, etc. So, this one should give off quite a bit more. Very nice. Well. This concludes uh, our tutorial of components. Hope uh, it's useful to you. And, uh, well, if you really want to teach, uh, learn this, I suggest not just listening, but also figuring things out a bit. I mean, of course you can't figure out, like, um, how long it takes for a piston to extend or something. I mean, at least not easily or without dedication. But what I do mean is like, see if you can come up with something and then uh, 
just try to build it. And if you come across problems, there will probably be an episode ready for you. So yeah, have fun experimenting. And uh, have fun just playing the game in general, actually. Have a great day, and bye bye.